Good morning. This is Land on the go with all you need to know in news and weather as you start your Sunday. We also have your boredom busters coming up, but first, our top story. The SDSU women's basketball team season came to an end last night with an opening round loss in the NCAA tournament in Spokane, Washington. The fifth-seeded University of Utah defeated the 12th seed Jackrabbits 68-54. The loss ended SDSU's 21-game winning streak. The Jackrabbits finished their season with a 27-6 record. Most singers are concerned with the state of their vocal cords on the day of a concert. However, a local college choir had a much larger focus before their Saturday evening performance. The USF Concert Chorale and Collegiate Choirs spent the morning volunteering at the St. Francis House. Nearly 100 students helped put together Easter baskets, pick up trash, put away Christmas decorations, and help with inventory. The choir students see the value in volunteering even on some of their busier days. The CEO of St. Francis House made a very good point about it's easy to write a check, but it's really hard to give up your time. So time is more valuable than money, and I think volunteering is one of the best ways to use your time. USF will have their next co uh, choir concert on Mother's Day. An apartment complex near downtown Sioux Falls will undergo major upgrades to provide affordable housing for single moms. This nearly 60-year-old apartment in the All Saints neighborhood will be converted into 12 units for families at risk of homelessness. A uh, South Dakota nonprofit will pay for the upgrades with the help of a $1.8 million loan from the city of Sioux Falls. We'll find out how the project will help struggling families find a safe and affordable place to live tonight on Kelloland Weekend News. Let's take a first look at the forecast now with meteorologist Adam Rutt in the Storm Center. Good morning, Adam. Good morning, Perry, and good morning, everybody. We'll address the elephant in the room and talk about this late season winter storm that's getting geared up and beginning to make its impact felt across the majority of Killowland. We'll start with a view from downtown where we have hit the freezing mark. That is going to be critical as we head through the day. 32 right now in downtown Sioux Falls with an easterly breeze at 16 miles per hour. We're going to watch where that rain snow line sets up over the course of the day, at least to the southeast. Meanwhile, up in Aberdeen, it is not really going to be uh, all that tricky. It's pretty cut and dry. We'll be below freezing. And as you can clearly see already, snow. We already have three inches of snow on the ground in Aberdeen as of this morning. And we'll see more through the day. 27 with an east wind at 15 miles per hour. We are seeing those low 30s creep up more and more towards Spencer now. They're at 32 along with Sioux Falls. Mitchell at 30. Yankton holding at 30 as well. Pine Ridge at 30. But you notice north of what and west, we are still very much in the 20s. We'll go into more detail about what we're expecting with this late season winter storm, including updates on winter weather headlines and what to expect as we head through the short and long term forecast all coming up in a bit. All right, thanks, Adam. Well, despite a return to wintry weather in the forecast, the staff at Landscape Garden Centers in Sioux Falls is already thinking spring. Typically in this region, our last frost day is usually around that May 5th, that first week, first, second week of May. If you do want to plant early, you're going to have to cover them for quite a few nights, probably, with the frost that still comes, because it's usually around Mother's Day that we ask you to start planting in the ground. Landscape Garden Centers will open for the season on April 1st. A voice familiar to Sioux Falls sports fans is back behind the microphone after a health scare. Randy Preston is the public address announcer for the Stampede and Augustana hockey teams, as well as the Canaries baseball team. Last month, he was diagnosed with a stroke. He's sharing his story with the hope that others will recognize the early signs of a stroke. Be sure to watch tonight's Eye on Kelloland at 10. The Dakota Southeastern Division Model Railroad Club is hosting the Greater Sioux Falls Model Train Show at the Multicultural Center in downtown Sioux Falls. They'll be operating model railroad layouts on display, plus switching layouts for kids to operate and earn their engineer's certificate. Today's hours are 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Admission is $5, free for ages 12 and under. The Passion and the Cross is a one-act musical featuring the largest cast to ever perform on the Orpheum Theater stage in downtown Sioux Falls. The performance is at 4 p.m. The Sacred Arts Series at the Cathedral of St. Joseph in Sioux Falls features the Augustana University Choir. The concert begins at 7.30 p.m. Admission is free. The Dakota Territory Gun Collectors Association is hosting a gun show at the Sioux Falls Convention Center and Arena. There will be more than 1,300 tables with antique, collectible, modern rifles and handguns on display and for sale. Today's hours are 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Admission is $10. Adam? 
Well, here's live to Aqua Radar. We'll get right to it. We're already seeing some snow this morning out to the west and northwest from Rapid City to Spearfish and Sturgis, and then up into the Eagle Butte, Faith, and Buffalo areas. But we're also seeing snow develop more and more from Aberdeen to Redfield uh, into Miller, and then uh, some heavier snow barreling through the Yankton area of just south of Yankton and Bonham County. This is moving up to the north and east through Clay and Union County. So we'll see if this is able to hold together as it makes its way towards Sioux Falls. But you notice we did just get to 32 degrees in Sioux Falls. So that rain snow line is lurking. We'll have to watch that very carefully. So here are the winter weather headlines. Winter storm warning in red from Buffalo all the way to Sisseton along the North Dakota border as far south and west as Bennett and Jackson County. This includes Pier, Mulbridge, Redfield, Aberdeen, Watertown as far south and east as Madison and Brookings, uh, where 6 to 12 inches of snow, certainly not out of the question, and the most likely area to see it as well. If you're over towards Sisseton, Millbank, Ortonville, uh, over toward uh, the Prairie Coteau, as well as the Buffalo Ridge and the Marshall and Pipestone, you have a better opportunity at seeing even localized higher amounts from that. Uh, the white area, that's a blizzard warning here on the Mitchell Chamberlain winter into Valentine. Again, multiple inches of accumulating snow, similar to what they'll have in the winter storm warning, but you'll also have the issue of blowing snow. By the way, that yellow area, that's a winter storm watch from Monday into Tuesday in between Mitchell and Sioux Falls through Hutchison and Bonham County. Meanwhile, for everybody else in blue, that's a winter weather advisory. Uh, points east from Mitchell going along the I-90 corridor, including the Sioux Falls area. That portion of the advisory and then from winter points west and then north and west. That's until 7 p.m. Central, 6 p.m. Mountain Time Sunday in that boxed area from Gregory to Turner and Clay counties. All points in between, including Yankton, Platte, Geddes as well. That is a winter weather advisory that expires at 1 p.m. this afternoon as we are going to watch where that rain snow line sets up shop. So here we go through Futurecast. Now, keep in mind, this is one particular solution. And at the end of the day, Mother Nature is going to have her say. But basically, once you head north and west of the Sioux Falls area, here on Watertown, Aberdeen and the like, that's where it's going to be mainly snow. It's going to be southeastern Kelowind where we watch and see how far north that rain snow line goes through the afternoon and into the evening toward Yankton, Sioux City, Vermilion in the northwestern Iowa. I think this is going to be more rain than anything else through the evening and into the night. But speaking of the night, notice where that rain snow line sets up very close to Sioux Falls. So we're going to watch that as that's going to make or break any potential for extra snow. But this will be the uh, needle or threading the needle portion of the forecast, though, even as we head into early Monday morning as uh, through Monday afternoon and Monday evening evening we continue to get that snow to develop through the afternoon and to the end of your day on Monday and Tuesday morning could even see a little more snow. Notice we get that wraparound effect of extra moisture not to mention chillier temperatures uh, through the start of your day on Tuesday. So the other take home message is going to be this. We're looking at very treacherous travel conditions in many locations unless you absolutely have to be out and about stay at home and play it safe. It's also going to be rather windy for a while. You will want to keep that in mind as we go through uh, the next couple of days. But by the second half of the week, it does get better. High temperatures today climbing mainly into the 30s south and east, 20s north and west. Again, that rain snow line is going to be crucial to watch. Lows tonight in the 20s and teens, the latter West River, even some 30s trying to hang tough. Sioux Falls points south and east. Again, that rain snow line being the big X factor. The rest of your seven day forecast overall is going to be better once we hit the second half, but the first half is going to be messy with that wintry mix through Monday becoming all snow eventually into early Tuesday morning for Sioux Falls. In Aberdeen, it's snow and it's wind as we head through early Tuesday, but you do get better by the end of the week back into the 30s and even around 40 by next weekend in pier we'll see snow today and tomorrow mainly dry tuesday but still windy then back in the 40s by the second half of the weekend into next weekend and for rapid city snow today tapering off monday mainly quiet tuesday through next weekend as we try and get back up into the mid 40s by next weekend stay safe stay informed have a great day everybody for more on your local news weather and sports you can always Always check out Kelloland.com.